<coughs> guys, 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 guys. Uh, I w need your attention. So let's continue with the mystery of uh, Cook's proof that uh, satisfiability is in fact uh, NP complete. Guys. So the idea is uh, to make a formula that essentially says uh, uh, that has the property that if you make it true, this will happen exactly if uh, the formula encodes uh, a correct run of a Turing machine finishing with the accepting state yes, right? So the formula, it will be possible to make the formula true just in case there exists a correct run of the Turing machine and the formula will, uh, the, both the formula together with the valuation will encode the whole run, right? <coughs> so the idea of the proof is this. <coughs> It's just like shooting a movie capturing the run of the Turing machine, uh, right? So this movie contains uh, of uh, frames. Uh, how many frames exactly, uh, uh, how many um, steps the computation takes place. Uh, so this will be step zero, the initial stage, step one, all the way to step that is bounded by a polynomial n. Uh, we can assume that the step is exactly p of n uh, because uh, once the machine reaches the accepting state, it holds. So all of the frames, if it stopped here, all of the subsequent frames will be identical. But we don't have to worry about the indices, uh, right? So the formula will have two parts. One part with, will guarantee that each frame is a correct snapshot of a stage in the computation of a Turing machine. Another part of the formula will uh, uh, guarantee that the sequence of the moves of the Turing machine is consistent. For example, that if uh, the head was scanning a cell here, then next frame it can scan only a, a, a cell one before or one after the, the, uh, the, uh, that cell, right? And the third part will guarantee that the transitions are not only legitimate, but are according to the table, transition table of that Turing machine, right? So in order to speak, be able to speak about what's on this frame, uh, the idea is uh, simple. We introduced a whole bunch of uh, propositional variables. Uh, but there will be only polynomially many of them. Uh, and you remember the reason for that is, uh, even though a Turing machine has bilaterally infinite step, if this is the starting cell zero, even if the machine moved all the time to the left, the farthest scanned cell can be only cell Pn, because Pn is the polynomial so that the, uh, uh, the computation terminates in P of n many steps when n is the length of the input. So just the, in the length is just how many, so to speak, bits or how many cells you used for initial description of the problem, okay? So and the same applies if you even if machine all the time went this way, the farthest cell scanned will be cell P. So here it will be minus Pn, Pn. So in total, we need variables that cover 
2 pn plus 1 many cells and we need v such variables for each state of the computation, right? So we will be keeping snapshots of this uh, for each stage. And so the number of stages here of computation is also Pn, right? So this is, or Pn plus one, I guess, if you start with zero. So all together for the cells, we will need 2pn plus 1 times pn uh, plus 1. So this is number of cells, and this is number of steps. And yeah, it's a lot of variables, but polynomially many, right? You can write, get a polynomial in terms of this polynomial, which is also polynomial, right? Okay, so, and uh, I forget, how did we, what variables did we use for cells? Hmm? Anyone uh, has a note from last week? Okay, we might change, so let's call cells. Uh, so it's cell i at instance of computation j. So this will be variables such that i goes between minus p of n and the p of n, and j goes between 0 and the p of n. So these are, and the intended, uh, sorry, just one second, cell, uh, uh, i cell at j state, uh, we need another variable. What is the other, uh, you know what? Yeah, okay, we need another variable. So what is the, the last variable case for? So this will be true if the i cell at step j has a symbol k. So k will range between one and the number of uh, symbols. Uh, and you remember there is a special symbol that is blank, right? Uh, that signifies that the cell has no content. It contains blank character. Okay, so what else do we need? We need to be able to say that uh, at stage, a certain stage of computation, the head scans a particular cell. So we will uh, need another bunch of variables, h, such that uh, it's uh, h of i j, uh, when i goes between, um, uh, so this will be the, uh, the stage of computation, so between zero and p of n, and j will range between minus p of n and p of n, and the intended meaning here is that at the i-th step of the computation, the head was scanning cell j. So this proposition varia propositional variable will be true just in case at the i stage of computation, i step, the head was above cell j. Yes? Sorry? Uh, okay, yeah. I guess that's, uh, uh, that's a good uh, objection to keep it more uniform. So uh, let's uh, swap them around. So here, I will be the cell. Um, so it will be between minus p of n and j will be the step. So the cell, uh, where do we put, I guess, what's more logical? Should I put ij or ji? ij, okay. So j is the state of the 
stage of the computation. Okay, so that's, uh, so the only other parameter that is left is in what state the machine is. So we will have a set of variables, let's call them S, so that uh, at the J state, stage of the computation, the state of the machine was M, right? So here, J is uh, between uh, zero and uh, P of N, and M is between uh, one, did we say, and uh, the number of states. Okay, now that's the vocabulary that uh, we can use to describe all of the cells and their relationship. So now our formula should say, should be such that if it can, if there is an evaluation that evaluates to true, uh, then uh, each of these uh, uh, snapshots have to correspond, has to correspond to a legitimate description of a Turing machine. So what do we have to say? First of all, we have to say that at each stage of computation, each cell can contain exactly one symbol, right? So it will be a big conjunction with respect to J between zero and PN, and then cell index between minus P of N and P of N, and uh, uh, the symbol uh, is uh, M, so we will have M and M prime between one and the number of uh, symbols, and we will say then that uh, uh, what did I use? C. That uh, C at stage J uh, and uh, cell with index I and symbol M, either not this, and here we have assumption M is not equal to M prime when we index this. So for each of the value of indices, you have one of these conjunct. It's either this or not C, uh, J, I, M prime. What does this conjunction says? At every stage of the computation, and every cell, for any two distinct symbols, either it is not the case that the content of the cell at that stage of the computation is M, or it is not M prime. It cannot be simultaneously true. It's not possible that a cell can contain two symbols. But we also have to say that there is always a symbol there, maybe blank, so we have to say then and, um, well, I should say, uh, should use single conjunction for a simple conjunction. So, and, uh, we have a, a big disjunction over all, okay, and we can put uh, here, we can put, so that we don't have to quantify uh, once again. So we can put, uh, but then it won't be perfect conjunctive form. So let's uh, uh, do. And for every stage of computation, J between zero and uh, Pn, because I'm trying to keep the formula 
in a um, conjunctive normal form. So all of these should be disjunctions and then conjunction of these clauses. So for at every stage of computation and for every cell between uh, minus Pn and Pn, and then here a big disjunction that goes between uh, m goes between one and the number of, sim uh, of uh, symbols, right? And then we have here C, I, J, M. So what does this formula says? It says that at any instant of the computation, every cell contains at least one symbol and this part says, and it is not possible that it contains two distinct symbols. Yes? Oh, gosh. Okay. It should be I. Okay, so I, J. I, J. Good. So. Okay. C is not a function. C is a propositional letter. It can be either true or false. So it will be true. Intended meaning is that cell I, at the stage of computation J, contains symbol contains symbol M. If uh, it's some other symbol, then this letter will be false. Sorry? Okay, so the Turing machine consists of bilaterally infinite tape that a head can move above that head and the Turing machine can be in one of finitely many states. What are the states? Uh, for example, if you have your computer, right, and uh, you give it an input on a, say, a tape, right? It starts reading the tape, flip-flops inside of the computer will start changing uh, whether they are open or, or whether they are in one state or the other state. So the collection of all possible states of all flip-flops and all the gates is one state. Any legitimate content of the, right, so it's finite amount of internal memory, so to speak. Okay. So now you can imagine that we can write exactly the same formula that says, uh, well, let's write it down. We want to say at every stage of the computation, the head scans precisely one cell. So for every step of computation, so between j, between 0 and p of n, uh, the head, either it is not that the head is, uh, okay, and then for every cell i, and another cell I prime that is between minus P, that are between minus P of N and plus P of N, either at a state of, how do I know I is uh, uh, H, but uh, uh, the cell is I, right? So either not I J or not I, J prime, uh, so is it, I, I should be using I. Uh, so for, uh, yeah, I prime J. 
what does this say? It says, for every state of the computation, every and every two cells, either the head is not above J, or, uh, sorry, either the head is not above I, or at the same stage of computation J, it is not over I prime. It cannot be of scanning two different cells. But we have to also say, and it is uh, somewhere, so we will say, and uh, a big disjunction over all I's between minus P of N and P of N, right? And, uh, um, ah, but we have to say first for at every state of, so and, and then the, there will be a big conjunction here uh, when uh, uh, J goes between zero and uh, P of N, uh, right? So at every stage of the computation, it is uh, disjunction over all I H of uh, I J, right? So this bit says at every instant of the computation, the head must be at least over one cell, right? Now, the same formula, kind of formula, you should say, that at every stage of the computation, the machine can be in, it cannot be in two distinct states, and it has to be in a state, right? So the same, uh, the same formula, right, it's, uh, it's just uh, of the same flavor. So let me just, uh, uh, rather than, shoot, what is now this? So you will have a formula that says um, at every stage of computation, uh, the machine is in exactly one state. Okay, so these uh, propositional formulas, we now conjunct them all, make a single conjunction, and these formulas will, this formula, resulting formula will be true just in case uh, each snapshot of the machine is uh, correct. It's a legitimate state of the machine, right? So now, after we kind of express the thing that each, each snapshot is correct, we have to ensure that the sequence is correct, right? What do we have to say? Well, for every stage of computation, so this will be, So we have to say uh, that for every j between 0 and p of n, um, we have to say that if the machine scans a cell, so that will be an implication. So it's either not the case that the head at stage J uh, scans a cell I. So the here we will have I between minus Pn and Pn. So either it is not the case that at stage J, 
the head is above I, or head is I plus one, J plus one, or head I minus one, J plus one. So tell me what does this disjunction say? For every state of the computation, if the machine scans cell I, then at the next state of the computation, the machine will either scan right cell one ahead, move one cell to the right, or it will move one step to the left. If you had a snapshot in which here the machine is, was above fifth cell and then seventh cell, obviously this cannot be a legitimate a movie about the uh, computation, correct computation. So you can then um, express all other necessary properties like this one. For every stage j between 0 and p of n, right? Uh, either the head is above cell I at stage J, and for every symbol, uh, how do we call it, K, between uh, one, zero, no, between one and the number of symbols. So either the head scans cell I, um, or the cell uh, I at stage of computation J K uh, okay so I want to say that uh, or so I want to say that uh, either, uh -huh, either it is not symbol K or C I uh, J, uh, sorry, E I J plus one K. Now tell me what this formula says. Huh? So at every stage of the computation, and for every symbol k, right? Either the cell at stage R, j scans cell i, or if this is not the case, then Either the content, okay, you can, um, uh, uh, to think about this, it's better to write it like this. Not H I J, um, uh, so, and, uh, and C I J K implies or not and okay let me see so it, if the cell if either it, so at the stage of computation J if the cell I is not scanned and if the content was um, K, then the content of I J plus one is uh, uh, K. So what does this say? If the head is not above cell I and the content of cell I was K, at the next stage must be the same content. So it can change the content only if the head is scanning it. Uh, Right, and now if you, uh, what is this? Uh, this is 
not, if you replace this, not, not, H, I, J, uh, and uh, C, I, J, K, or C, I, uh, J plus one, K, and then you can replace this by a, <coughs> by Boolean, right, De Morgan laws, produces H, I, J, or not C, I, J, K, or C, I, J plus one, K, right? Which is exactly what we have uh, here. So if it's not the case that I cell is scanned at stage J, then if the constant was K, it has to remain K. So what else uh, do we have to say to, to make the, the conclusion that it's a correct, I guess that's all what it is, uh, right? Now we have to make sure that the transitions are not only correct, but according to the table. So what does this mean? It means that for every stage of the computation j uh, between 0 and p of n, uh, and for every content of the cell i, uh, um, so for every, boom, uh, so we want to say if, uh, if cell j is scanned, so from minus p of n to p of, oops, this is i, right? For every cell and every m between um, now, let me think, from one so how many symbols do we have? A ah, number of symbols. <laughs> we have to say the following. If the head is scanning J I, right, uh, and of course, this will be all replaced because if it's an implication. So if J scans cell I and um, content of I cell at state J is a symbol M, right? And the state of the machine at state J is, uh, 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 what did we have for states? Oh, let's call it uh, S. So we have to quantify over all states here um, between, between one and the number of states. Right? So this will range through all of these, uh, and it will say uh, if uh, the state is S. Uh, so, okay. So state, it's J and state S. Uh, then, uh, H I plus one, now, uh, okay, let me put it like this. I plus minus one, J plus one, and state J plus one equals is S star, and I'll explain what this is. And symbol in the cell I 
at stage of computation j plus 1 is uh, m star. Now, what are these uh, guys? Exactly. You, that's whatever for each values. Uh, so this is universally quantified, right? And the uh, table tells you this simply says uh, that it is the ith cell that is being scanned, right? Uh, then, if the content of the cell is uh, symbol M, and if the state of machine is S, then it will be H of either I plus minus 1, depending what the table tells you, right? And the state will be new state depending what the table tells you, namely the table will tell you if you are scanning symbol M and you were into state S, go to state S star. So what exactly this looks like will depend on the table, right? These bits are universally quantified and what comes here and here and here is obtained uh, at the table, in the table, right? For all of the, any of these values, you can look up. Uh, of course, these guys will be independent uh, of the value of these, uh, but will depend on what M is here. This will just say that uh, that's the, where the head is, what M is, what the state is, and then you will put here whatever values the table tells you of transitions. Yes. Yes. So this simply tells you now that on the movie, the transition between the frames will be done precisely according to what the table specifies. Uh, yeah, 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 wait, wait a second, I messed it up, so, uh, wait a second, so, head, state, yeah, this is cell. Right? So we are almost done. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, the ingenuity of Cook was to actually comprehend, uh, to understand that uh, the functioning of the machine is describable by a propositional formula. The rest is footwork, you know, anyone can come up with this, but uh, he just got this brilliant idea that SAT is complete. Right, so this was the insight. And then CARP came and shows it's not that just SAT is complete, but a whole vast 21 crucially important practical problems are also complete. This was kind of an academic result, completeness of the SAT. But CARP made it fully, you see, if uh, if there were no significant problems equivalent to SAT, no one would, this would be just a footnote in history, right? But what CARP actually showed is not only that SAT is complete, that uh, you can solve SAT if and only if you can solve any NP problem, but CARP actually showed that 21 problems that people were desperately trying to solve in polynomial time, like traveling salesman, vertex cover, integer linear programming, uh, just name it, a whole bunch of truly Hamiltonian circuits, uh, just name it. All these problems are equally hard, right? And that's why we cannot find an algorithm for one of them, because if you had algorithm for one of them, boom, 
all other problems will be reduced to that. Right? And that was the point when people started suspecting that we are in deep trouble, right? Okay, what else do we have to say? So this says functioning of the machine is correct. Now we have to say, and the input is our instance. So then you will have a conjunction that says, at state of computation, where did we put the state of computation? J, zero. The content of the first cell was symbol uh, S, uh, uh, S, K, one. The input is, uh, looks like this, S, K, one, S, K, two, up to S, K, say, uh, uh, P. This is your input. So you will have a conjunction of the form uh, K, uh, K, K, L, when L goes between uh, 1 and uh, P. So this says that the, at initial state of computation, before the machine starts operating, ah, yeah, 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 this is L. So that L cell contains precisely appropriate symbol for our input. Finally, we have to say that the machine accepted that it said yes. So this is simply to say that the state at P uh, n, uh, state P n is uh, accept whichever uh, state is, uh, so state accept, uh, right? Pn is the length of the computation. Polynomial that bounds the length of the computation. And remember, the table says, uh, once you hit S accept or S reject, uh, the machine doesn't do anything, uh, right? So now notice, notice, we didn't specify any other cells, right? And in particular, we didn't specify what's written here because remember in a non-deterministic machine, it should halt in yes state if and only if there is a good guess that is written here. But the point is that uh, the valuation provides the guess. If there exists a satisfying evaluation, then that evaluation will talk about these symbols as well in the beginning, and that will be the good guess. Right? So, uh, so the uh, decision problem is true if there exists a guess so that the machine after, after P of N many calculation stop in the state yes. So if it's a vertex cover or say for, uh, the number is composite, then here you would write the guess of the divisor and then the machine will simply try to divide this by that and see whether it's divisible, right? Um, so here is, so the valuation provides the guess. So the statement is uh, the problem will, uh, the, the, the pro instance, problem instance will be true if and only if there exists a satisfying assignment. But this satisfying assignment will provide the values depending how the cells initially are evaluated, what values so what values for the cells, uh, uh, this will be C, right? When uh, um, J is zero and I goes from minus one to minus whatever many symbols uh, the gas has. Uh, so, um, so, so uh, on the bottom left, uh, 
Yes. So you can be PL zero like Yes. No, 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 no. This is not about the guess. This specifies that the input is correctly written, but we don't know what will be the values for negative guess, for negative. It means there exists evaluation, and that evaluation has to set the variables with negative indexes as well. But we don't know which ones they will be. Right? But if there exists a satisfying assignment, and voila, uh, this shows that whatever you can compute in NP time, uh, how to translate the problem, every instance of the problem is translatable into this gigantic formula that is of polynomial size that can be satisfied just in case uh, the for some guess, the machine accepts it. So it's really brilliant. And you know what happened, I have to tell you gossip. So Cook then applied for a position at Berkeley. And they told him off. Because, ooh, it's a big thing to be a professor at Berkeley. Right? It's kind of obnoxiousness. So probably at that time, there was no computer science department. So he probably applied at the math department, right? And so Cook went happily to Canada, to uh, Toronto, and uh, made a brilliant career there. And uh, uh, Berkeley people ended up look, uh, looking like donkeys because they couldn't appreciate how, because at that time when he applied for the job, CARP still hasn't shown the equivalence of SAT with all these fundamentally important problems. But this theorem and Karp's paper is essentially <laughs> the state of computer science today. Yeah? Uh, the amount of progress that we made since then, I, you know, some, some computer scientists would lynch me for this statement, but it's true. These two papers account for most of what is known in computational complexity. Uh, and uh, the problem whether P is equal to NP, whether this guess is necessary at all, is uh, the most probably one of the hardest math problem given how many people try to solve it, including famous mathematicians who have fields, uh, medals, and whatnot. Anyhow, so I hope you, you enjoyed this. Uh, it's not practically terribly important, but it's kind of eye-opening uh, uh, why, why completeness. Okay, so see you then next week. <laughs>